Hi everyone, welcome back to Codeheim where we explore Golang in depth. In today's video we're diving into how to use MongoDB with Golang. Whether you're building scalable web applications or need a NoSQL database for a project, MongoDB is an excellent choice. Let's get started. Let's say you have MongoDB installed on your machine. We will begin by installing the official MongoDB Go driver. In your Go project folder, run this command. I have this installed already, otherwise it takes some time. We will demonstrate the usage of Mongo with a simple Gingonic project. Here, we have defined the router and the logger. Then, we connect with the database. Finally, start the server. In this project, we are following MVC structure. This folder contains the models and this one contains the controllers. In the file setup.go, we will write the code to connect to Mongo database. This file movie.go, we will define the model and functions to interact with the collection models. Here is the sample data. In this collection, we will store movie titles and the actors. This is the BSON ID. This is the movie. These are the actors. This structure will represent the above data. In the controllers folder, in this file, we will define the handlers. Let's start the implementation with DB connection. Now, let's define some constants. Connection string is where our MongoDB server lives. Here, we're pointing to a local server running on port 27017 using the movie's database. DB and collection name store the database and collection names. Defining these as constants keeps the code clean and avoids hard coding values. Here, we declare a global variable Mongo client of type mongo.client. This will hold the database connection, so we can reuse it across our application. Now, in the connect database function, we create client options using options.client.applyuri. This is where we tell MongoDB where our server is running by passing the connection string. Next, we call mongo.connect to establish the connection. It takes a context, which is currently set to to-do. This is a placeholder. In real-world applications, you'd use a proper context with timeouts for better control. The second argument is the client options we just configured. This function returns the client and error. We check for errors after attempting to connect. If something goes wrong, we panic with the error message. If everything goes well, we assign the connected client to the Mongo client variable. This ensures the connection is available for the rest of the application. Now that the DB connection completes, let's move on to model functions so that you can easily understand how to insert, update, delete and query data. We'll start with our sample data. Imagine we're managing a collection of movies. Each record includes a unique ID, the movie's name, and a list of actors. To represent this in Go, we define a movie struct. To define the ID field, we will use primitive.objectID. This maps this field to to underscore ID in the BSON format. The JSON tag here specifies how the field is encoded or decoded when converting the struct to or from JSON format. ID will be serialized as underscore ID in JSON. If ID is empty, zero value, 
the omit empty directive ensures it is omitted from the JSON output. This BSON tag works similarly to the JSON tag, but is used for MongoDB's BSON, binary JSON format. This is the format MongoDB uses to store and query documents. The movie and actors fields represent the movie name and list of actors. Let's look at inserting a single movie. This function accepts a movie as the argument and returns an error. We first select the movie's collection from the client we have set up during the connection establishment. Then, we get the DB and then the collection from the database. These variables are defined in the setup file. Then, we call insert1, passing a context and the movie object. This function returns the inserted result and an error. If the insertion succeeds, we print the generated underscore ID. This function handles errors by logging them and returning the error if needed. Next, let's insert multiple movies using the insert many function. This function accepts a slice of movies. Let's copy paste the insertion code from the previous function. Instead of insert1, we are going to call insert many. Since insert many requires a slice of interface, we need to convert our slice of movie objects to the required type. Here, we define variable new movies that is a slice of interfaces. In this loop, we convert movies to interfaces. We then call insert many on new movies. This function returns the result and error. We handle the error and log the result. Finally, return the error. Now let's update a movie record. The function takes a movie ID and the updated movie details. First, we convert the string ID into a primitive dot object ID. This is the BSON ID that MongoDB understands. We do so with object ID from hex function. We pass the string ID to this function. E this function returns the ID and error. Let's handle the error. Actually, we can return from here. Then, we create a filter to find the document with the matching underscore ID. The filter specifies which document to update. Here, we're looking for the document with underscore ID equal to the ID we just converted. BSON.M is a type that represents a BSON map. It's used to build queries and updates for MongoDB. The update specifies how the document should be modified. $set is a MongoDB update operator that replaces the values of specified fields without modifying the entire document. The keys in this map will be replaced in the record. Next, we get the collection and then call the update one method on it. Here, we pass the context, the filter and the update map.
This returns the result and error. Handle the error. Return nil as there is no error. Let's print the new record. Deleting a movie is straightforward. Like the update function, we convert the movie ID to an object ID and create a filter. We then call delete one and print the result, which includes how many documents were deleted, usually one. To fetch a single movie by name, we use the find function. This function accepts the movie name and returns a movie instance. First, we declare a variable to hold the response. We define a filter using bson.d, which is a slice of key value pairs for queries. Using find one, we fetch the first document that matches the filter. Then decode it into a movie object. If no movie is found, an error is logged. Finally return the result. Say, if you want to fetch multiple records matching an attribute, we can do something like this. This function returns a slice of movies. First, we declare a variable to hold the result, which would be a slice of movies. Then we define the filter and the collection, just the way we did in the previous function. This time, we use find method. It retrieves a cursor, which allows us to iterate through all matching documents and an error. As usual, we handle the error. We call cursor.all to decode all results into a slice of movie structs. We handle the error and then return the slice of movies. Now to list all the movies, we just replace the filter with an empty filter. This means there is no condition. The last function we are going to implement, delete all. This deletes all records. Here, we call delete many with no filters. Now that we have the model methods, we are going to implement the handlers and the routes. In the interest of time, I am going to fast forward this. Let's run the server. Here are all the APIs. Let's fetch all movies. And here is the list of movies present in the collection. This API fetches all records that have movie name Iron Man. There is some problem here. The error is the results argument must be a pointer. In find all here in this function, we should be passing the address. Now it works. The response is an array. It has only one record as only one matches. If more than one matches there, it will list. Let's try to fetch one record. I think I have put the wrong route.
Now it works. It responds with one record. Now, let's try to add a movie. The payload is specified here. This API works too. Let's see if this movie is added. It is there. To add multiple records, we have this endpoint. The payload looks like this with two records. This works too. In the complete list, we can see the newly added movies are present. Let's try to remove this record. We copy the ID. In this API, we put this ID to delete the record. Now the record disappears from here. And that's how you can use MongoDB with Golang. We've just scratched the surface, but this foundation will help you build more complex applications. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to Codeheim, and leave a comment with what you'd like us to cover next. See you in the next video.